Hi, I'm Andrea. This is the first video of the series of digital jewelry illustration courses. These courses are great for both beginners and intermediate artists. If you are a beginner, don't worry. I'm going to show you how I draw step by step, so you can easily follow along. But first, in this video, I want to introduce the software that we are going to navigate in the class. The software we are using here is called Procreate. It is really easy to use, the function is intuitive and easy to pick up. Procreate can only be downloaded on an iPad and paired with an Apple Pencil. It's okay that if you don't have an iPad. When I'm demonstrating techniques of rendering jewelry, I will use those common brushes that you can easily find in other softwares like Photoshop and Painter. And I will show you what kind of brushes I'm using in the class and what features that I like about them in the third video. So in that way, you can find similar ones in the software that are installed on your devices and apply them in the class. If you do have an iPad, then you need to check if your iPad can be paired with Apple Pencil. I will leave the link below. After confirming your model is qualified, then you can download Procreate from the App Store. Okay, let's open the software. The Arts Gallery is the first thing you will see when you open Procreate. And it's where you will find all your artworks. I'll be going to introduce some basic functions in this video, so in that way we can start drawing without constantly stopping to explain how to use each tool. You can see there are four options on the upper right corner of the screen. When you click Select, then you can select one, or multiple files. After selecting files, you can decide what you want to do with these files. Either stack, share, duplicate, or delete them. When you choose to stack files, those files will be put together into a pile. It's helpful if you want to categorize your artworks. You can also rename the stack. When you click on Share, this is how you export files, and you can choose a format to export it. Besides Select, you can also import a file from external program, like a Google Drive, OneDrive, or import a photo from your iPad album. Or we can just click on the plus sign here to open a new canvas. There are many options here. By sliding left on different size options and select Edit, we can customize the canvas. Let's set the DPI to 300. Then we'll get better quality of the artwork. If you want to print the artwork afterwards, change the color profile to CMYK. If you already have a specific size in mind, you can click on the folder icon here. Otherwise, I would suggest you to start with the screen size canvas. This is the interface that we are using to create our artwork. You can use your fingers to zoom in or out and rotate the canvas. Again, I want to introduce all the functions at once. I will start with those tools we'll need immediately or use frequently in the class and the rest will be introduced during each section when we need it. Let's start from upper left corner. If you click Gallery, then you will be back to the initial scene, which is the Arts Gallery. Let's go back to the canvas. The one next to Gallery is Action. You can click Add to insert a file, a picture, or text. By clicking Canvas, you can crop and resize the canvas and click on Share to export the file. When export a file, you can choose the format and how you want to share it. For example, through email, messenger, or upload to cloud. And if you'd like to quickly go through the whole process of your drawing, you can go to Video and turn on the time-lapse recording in advance. 
and come back to click Export the video after the class or your creation. The next one is Preference setting. Here we can change the background color. Or if you are left-handed, you can change the position of the sidebar to the other side. Let's click on Gesture Control. You can see there are plenty of settings that you can customize with your preference. I would suggest you do that after you get familiar with the software. Now we'll go to the last one in the category, General. When I'm drawing jewelry, I mainly rely on the Apple Pencil, and I really don't want my hand to mess up the details that I'm trying to build. So I highly recommend you to turn on this button. Disable Touch Actions. Fingers touches will only perform gestures. Next, we'll select eyedropper. Turn on touch and hold. Then we can use our finger to quickly select a color by pressing on it. Okay, let's go back to the main screen. The icon you see here like a magic wand is named Adjustment. If you want to enhance the contrast, make color more intense or pale, or blur certain parts of drawing, you will find tools that you need here. And we'll demonstrate how and when to use them in later classes. And the next two icons by the Adjustment is called Selections and Transform, which means we'll have to click this ribbon-like icon in order to select an object or a certain area from our drawing. And if we want to move or deform the object that we just selected, then we need to click this mouse cursor icon to do so. Let's come to the upper right side of the canvas. Tools on this part is everything that we need to illustrate jewelry. The first one starts from the left is pants, then comes with smudge, erase, layers, and color. When we click on color, we have a few options below to decide to use. The last one is palettes. We'll come back to that later. I use disk a lot, and when I'm using it, I usually pick the hue that I want by dragging the dots on the outer parts of the circle. Then drag the dots at the center to decide saturation and brightness. And when you want to select color black or white, you just double-click the near area, then you will be calibrated to black or white. When it comes to layers, the one at the bottom is background color. You can change it by tapping it. The color panel will show up. And we will be drawing on layers. You can see there's a plus icon at the upper right corner here. We can click it to add more layers as we need. By sliding left on the layer, we can lock, duplicate, or delete the layer. For the rest three tools, pants, smudge, and erase, the first click means that we are selecting this tool. Second click on it, then we can open the brush library. You can see there are more than 10 categories of brushes that Procreate offers here. You can also add brushes by yourself through click on the plus icon. But for now, these brushes is more than enough for us to use in the class. Before using each kind of brushes, we can adjust brush size and opacity. If you often use a specific brush size or opacity, you can press the plus sign to memorize the setting. Press the minus sign to remove it from memory. I will reset it as often as I need. And if you really don't like something you drew here, there's undo and redo tools beneath it. We'll draw a circle. Then select a color and drag it into the circle to fill it. What I want to emphasize is, when filling color, sometimes it might not fill up area properly. Like you can still see blank lines, sometimes even blank patches in it. We can fix this by dragging the color to the area 
and don't lift up the pan. Then slide the pan to the right to adjust the threshold to fill the cut properly. You can see threshold percentage is rising when pencil sliding right. If we over adjust it, the cutter will spill over the outline. If that happens, then we need to slide to the left to lower the threshold to a proper percentage. And this is the introduction of basic functionality of Procreate. We'll learn more in the later classes. See you next class! If you like this video or you want to learn more about jewelry design and rendering, please subscribe my channel and turn on notification.